afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Wonderful. Well, my name is Robert Van. I am general manager of the Sacramento Youth Symphony. And it is my great honor to welcome you to our fall Vivace Strings and Academic String Orchestra program. Thank you so much for being here. So we are excited. I want to thank St. Anthony's Parish for allowing us to use this space. I think it has a really nice sound, and I know you're going to enjoy this concert. Just a couple of quick things. This is a fully masked event, so please, please, please keep your masks on uh, over your mouth and nose at all times. Thank you very much. In the event of an emergency, your exits are those glass doors behind you. Please open them before you exit. <laughs> that is all from me. Well, actually, you know what? I want to, uh, we have a special guest in the audience. We have maestro Michael Newman, our artistic director emeritus. And without further ado, please join me in welcoming the Vivace Strings with Concertmaster Joshua Murray and Maestro Greg Brucker. That was a perfect and wonderful reminder just to make sure your phones are on silent. Thank you for that wonderful public service announcement. <laughs> oh, I should, before I play this, I, for, I forgot, I was going to talk to you about this. Um, first of all, welcome. It's wonderful to see people and music. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time coming, huh? So, welcome back. Uh, my name is Greg Brucker. This is, the, I think, the 15th year that I've been working with uh, the Youth Symphony and the Vivace Strings here. And um, it's absolutely been a wonderful year so far. This first piece we're about to play, I wanted to talk to you about for a second, because you might not recognize the composer's name, or maybe you might recognize the composer's name recently. Um, Joseph Below, Le Chevalier de Saint George is someone who I look back in my textbooks when I learned about him, which was about five or six years ago, and found him in one spot, in one line, in one textbook of the many music textbooks that I went through in college. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Why am I seeing stuff that says, like, he's a Mozart contemporary, and that Mozart would go, like, kind of secretly go over to France, where St. George performed, and sit in the audience and listen. Heard stories. So I went and looked this guy up. And this is an amazing story. And it's a story in, uh, well, these, this is what should be in the books that we should be learning from. Um, and I, I think we'll kind of, I think there's one reason why it's, he's not. So Joseph Ballone was born in, I think, Guadalupe in the Caribbean to a French bourgeois father and a kidnapped African who was enslaved as a mother, for a mother. And a prince abolished slavery in 1753. And at that point, he decided to bring his son, we don't know much else about the, you know, his mother, but his son back to France. And he gave him, because he was bougie, he gave him a solid upbringing and was able to pay for it. And this young man, Joseph Boulogne, became the youngest cavalry general in French history under Napoleon at 17, youngest ever. And he studied violin. And he became a professional violinist. 
and he started composing. And his compositions and his being, being known about among you know, the, the aristocracy and all that, he uh, became the director, artistic director of the Paris Orchestra for many years. And in that time, he played all sorts of music, uh, including his own, and several violin concertos and symphonies, quartets. And it was said that, it's said in, in uh, the history, that he, um, well, Mozart, like I said, would come over from Austria because he heard about this really famous guy who was, who was really popular. And he wanted to hear why he was so popular, and he'd come and listen to his music. And there's a handful of spots in Mozart where you can hear some almost direct quotes of St. George. Um, St. George taught Marie Antoinette the violin. She was a big fan, apparently. And he was um, incredibly famous to the point that John Adams, one of our presidents, called him the most important and most famous man in Europe. Um, being a black Frenchman, uh, just after the abolition of slavery then, it's quite a, a wonderful thing to move forward. But this is someone who's left out of these history books. He is a contemporary of Mozart, Haydn, and Beethoven, and should be up there as one of the four names. One last little bit before we play this piece. Um, I was listening to Haydn, actually, what was it? I think it was uh, St. George's a, a Violin Concerto in B-flat. And there's a spot that says, ya -di -da 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 da 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 And I'm like, wait a minute. That's Haydn 104, his 104th symphony. Right, that's Haydn. It's like literally a direct quote. And we listened to this in class, and we went backwards on the thing, and listened like three or four times, and it was like, there's this bit that was a direct quote. So I started looking if he was connected to Haydn and all. And there's several pieces that Haydn wrote while he was in Paris. Guess who commissioned it? Joseph Boulogne, the Chevalier de Saint George. Right? So um, this amazing composer deserves some, some of it, some due, some time. And so um, I found, in looking for stuff, there's not a lot that's arranged for this age. And so I found a piece that was uh, a scan of an old publication from, or an old uh, published piece that was like a scan of, from the Paris Library. And so it was not readable by these guys. So I put it on, on a program and um, fixed some of the errors in the publishing. And we're, we're playing a piece that's his, it's his Opus 10, Symphony Number no. 1. There are also a couple of brass woodwind parts, but we didn't include that in. It seemed kind of like a, a, a minimal thing we didn't have to add in for the moment. Um, but I don't think this piece has ever been played in Northern California, ever. And this is the actual music. This is a, a, a word for word, note for note piece of music minus the couple brass that otherwise would play in a full symphony. So um, it's a, a real pride of ours to be able to do something like this. And in continuing to look for the composers that we haven't heard of, because there's so many that we have heard of that we just we learn about, there's a lot of amazing music out there that really deserves its time and due. And so, um, you know, what a place to start. So we found, I found this wonderful piece. We've worked on it, it's, it's a tough one for this level, and um, I think they've done a wonderful job with it. Sorry, that, that can kind of fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyways, I wanted to share that story with you about this man, because this, this guy is an incredible composer. I mean, a whole bunch of other amazing things about him, just one of these really phenomenal characters in history that we really need to know about. So, um, this is uh, St. George's Opus 10, Symphony Number no. 1.
So we have a short little concert as the first one of the year here. We have one more piece for you, which uh, we're pretty sure you'll recognize. Um, this is a fun one. We're not going to do the dance for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>